<laughs> An anti-Trumper has an epiphany and wonders, could the idiot be me? New York Times op-ed writer David Brooks sent shockwaves through the left-wing establishment this week by asking a simple question. What if we're the bad guys here? We being the elitist Trump-hating liberal ruling class, including the media, who thumb their nose at everyday Americans. In his latest column, Brooks concludes the answer is yes, arguing that he and his fellow elites grew so detached from reality that the rise of Trumpism was inevitable. And you can hear the horrified shrimp forks and espresso cups dropping from a mile away. <laughs> He details how the progressive upper crust saw themselves as morally superior saviors and that Trump supporters were just drooling fools. Writing, quote, the ideal that we're all in this together was replaced with the reality that the educated class lives in a world up here and everybody else is forced into a world down there. Members of our class are always publicly speaking out for the marginalized, but somehow we always end up building systems that serve ourselves. Hmm. So th those same progressives, driven by ego and hungry for power, now dominate the media, politics, and major corporations, cluelessly lecturing while their cities burn, pushing the defunding of police, and murdering America's most popular beer by hiring a gibbering goofball in a skirt. <laughs> yeah. Brooks added, quote, like all elites, we use language to recognize one another and exclude others, using words like problematic, cisgender, Latinx, and intersectional is a sure sign that you've got cultural capital coming out of your ears. Meanwhile, members of the less educated classes have to walk on eggshells because something that was sayable five years ago now gets you fired. So when Trump came along offering a voice to the voiceless, he became the threat. But now they're getting a taste of their own medicine. And shockingly, for saying what he said, David Brooks has yet to be snatched from the street and stuffed into a windowless van or murdered by Hillary Clinton. <laughs> but, you know, the night is still young. Dagan, why is he admitting this now? What's driving this realization? It's a, by the way, this, he just explained what Tyra said in the last block. I hate this article. I... <laughs> Because number one, he is speaking to the super elites and they are hearing what he's preaching. And let me explain myself. By the very fact that I'm exploring this, I just, that I am even pondering that we might be bad guys, that makes me and us not just good guys, but super great guys, that I am having this moment of self-reflection. But this is not lasting, because at the end of the day, they are all ponderous, condescending pricks. Mm -hmm. And they will always be that way. Um, all right. He dismisses. At the end of the piece, he dismisses the entire premise. <laughs> Trump needs to go to jail. <laughs> and he asks the question, when will we ever stop behaving in ways that make Trumpism inevitable? Uh, never. Yeah. Because uh, in the article, he goes into how, how, how few people, 0.8% uh, of college graduates graduate from the super elite 12 schools. Do you know what? Two-thirds of people in this country don't have college degrees. Mm -hmm. That's the two-thirds of the nation that you are utterly dismissing. And then the paltry little free time that working Americans have, they have two questions. You got enough ice, and did you, you fill her up? Mm -hmm. That's all that America cares about. All right. Tyrus? <laughs> Care to add anything? I, I pride myself in always filling her up. Uh, <laughs> what? Pour a glass? What? Half glass empty. Pete, you know what I'm talking I, about. I do. I know. Exactly. You don't want a half empty Absolutely. cup. Look, you got to pour it in? Yeah, you got to pour it in, you know? Mm -hmm. Half empty cup with guests over? That's embarrassing. Not in my household. I won't have it, good manners. sir. You have manners. You know, I, 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 I can relate to 
what the good man is trying to say. He's, it's like having a narcissistic mother, mm -hmm. you know? Do I love too much? <laughs> Did I try too hard? Was my wanting you to have decorum and look good at school just too much for you? So and that's what this is. That's what Dagan is saying. It's like there, and if it wasn't for me being so giving and, and just virtuous and, and perfect, the slime never would have came in, but the, I can't compete with the, the ugliness and the evil because it is hard mm -hmm. to be this way. <laughs> and you can't. <laughs> and I've done everything I could for you, Pete. Not my fault. But it's not my fault. <laughs> yeah. It's my fault for loving you too much, even though you're deplorable. Yes. <laughs> Kat, did you read the article and feel the same way? Well, okay. So. I'm not a liberal, I'm also not a conservative. I do know how it feels to have people just who are gonna hate you no matter what you do. And at a certain point you're like, should I kill myself? Like, you don't wanna just keep listening to them. And I think that a lot of these people, the way they see Trump is that if you voted for Trump, you're a bad person. It doesn't mean if you support everything he does, or even I will still get it from people because I work here. Yeah. So I'm associating with people who voted for Trump. So that makes me a bad person. And it's like you're normalizing Trump. It's like, dude, half of the country mm -hmm. voted for this guy, right? So how can you say you're a worthless, irredeemable human being for you know, seeing half the country is also being human, and that makes you a good person. Yeah. <laughs> Get over yourself. Yes, yes. We're, we're just being honest. Right. Yeah, like, how does it drives me insane? And they see themselves as good people. It's like, no, you're not. You don't want to do the work for improving yourself. So you want to take what you already are and try to spin that and be, oh, that makes me so much better than everyone else. You're not better than anybody. Pete, you're better than everybody. Everyone. <laughs> At least uh, superficially. I, I, I was driving, we were driving back from a week at the, at the beach where I was using my self-tanner. Yeah, what are, we, what are we wearing? Uh, it's called The Sun, Greg, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and my, uh, my wife was reading this article, because I was driving, kids are yelling, and it's amazing, you read it, you think, oh, well, he's really, he's, yeah. he's getting it. Oh, okay, he's, David Brooks, the anti-Trumper, who used to be a conservative, by the way, has written this column for years, bashing Trump, maybe this is a conversion moment. And then uh, three, the last three paragraphs is, y'all are idiots. <laughs> it is. It's easy to understand why people in the less educated class would cling to Trump. I love the last line, though. When, we, when will we stop behaving in ways that make Trumpism inevitable? They can't. Mm -hmm. Their systems don't work. Right. They fence themselves away from the criminality and lawlessness that they endorse. And then they wonder why everyone else is pissed off about it. Yeah. So, of course, they're going to keep creating Trump. And... I, I, I guess I think this is why, to give a nod to my kids who are yelling in the back, this is why Trump is the GOAT. Mm -hmm. This is why Trump is the GOAT, no cap. You won't see many athletes resting in sports without drug testing. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.